So I gave my thoughts on the Eisner Awards nominating both Ed Piscor and Alex Acampi in the same show. And, you know, I don't I don't think I need to repeat my thoughts on how tasteless that that appeared to be. But this video is not about any kind of rants or any negative thoughts on it. I already gave it in the last video. Check it out if you didn't hear it. Instead, I just want to just focus on, I hate to say this word, but for the sake of brevity, I'll say it, positivity. So the Pisker family, uh, with Ed's sister Justina as the spokesperson, has graciously, graciously accepted the invitation to attend the Eisners. And I think if you really care about Ed's legacy, if you care about the art of comics and the craft of comics, probably focus on that and focus on want well, to be nice because he was a creative person and he cared about the arts of, of comics. But if he wins, great. You know, it's, again, uh, there's no uh, there's no denying his legacy in comics as well as pop culture. You know, if you even have someone like Chuck D speaking out for you, reflecting on the impact and influence you had as a person in the arts transcending comics, then it would only make sense given his legacy to honor him posthumously with the uh, the award that he's nominated for. But um, it's still, at the end of the day, there's still that taint of, of his accusers attending the same ceremony. But again, I, I said my piece on, on that in the last video. Instead, I want to focus on possibly, maybe, possibly, maybe not so much in the industry, but as far as the field of comics itself, whether it's in the indies, individual artists, or individual companies that come out and produce comics, rediscovering the love and the art of comics, the storytelling, the characters. Uh, I've been reading a lot of uh, Popeye lately, C. Seagrass Popeye, um, looking into the, uh, the history of Thimble Theater, which gave us olive oil. And, the, and her family, and then ultimately debuting Popeye. But the history of Thimble Theater was in of itself fascinating because it reflects what's missing today. What's missing today is characters that people can relate to. Popeye was a, a product of the Depression era America. Very rugged, very violent, but very lovable too. It's just getting by the blue collar guy who fought his way to what he wanted. I don't know ultimately that way was olive oil. And what are we today? What are we as a people today? Well, we're dis disenfranchised, disengaged. We're like a chicken without our head as our society burns all around us. As we see the morals that our society was founded by crumbling before us and our kids growing into an environment of confusion with predators dictating the rules and laws that are plaguing our kids and forcing them to grow up into things they didn't ask to grow up into. How does that reflect it in comics or in entertainment in general? And, and how can that produce entertainment that can help a society? Well, not help a society, but, well, yeah, in a way, help a society reflect on itself and grow from it and being able to embrace what it is and aspire to be better and be inspired by the victories of characters in the quote unquote funny pages. We're not seeing that today. I mean, what character in comics can you say was or is inspirational and aspirational? I dare you to find me one. Streaming, TV, uh, I don't watch TV anymore, but streaming, I mean, I, mean, I don't watch really shows on TV, on streaming either. I just stick with movies and, and I watch stuff online, but I don't really. Look at shows like I used to, and you know, poor the poor Doctor Who fans seeing what happened to that character and what it became. Like, can you be shocked? Can you really be shocked at what happened with Doctor Who? Can, can you honestly be shocked? I'm not shocked. <laughs> um, I feel bad for the Doctor Who fans, but I'm not shocked. But the, you got showrunners, writers, creators that don't that are not relating. To the average American because they're not they're not the average American, they're not in the same society as we are. They're in a bubble somewhere, forcing legislation, forcing guidelines and, and laws into our uh, environment and into the our way of life, even into our workplaces. And it's creating such disillusionment and disengagement. And it's 
it's possible unless things change, we may see an ending of pop culture as we know it and entertainment as we know it. Maybe it's a little too bleak. I don't know. A little too bleak, but can you honestly tell me there's a there's a civil lining at the end of this? Maybe not in our generation, maybe in the next generation. Maybe uh, our kids will inherit the very tools that we, oh, well, that's not going to happen because look what's going on with AI. AI is taking over faster than we anticipated. Much faster than we anticipated. And with that, the, the decreasing commitment to creativity and skill. I think people relate more to, to fiction when it's organically made at the hands of a, of a human being and we marvel at the skill of the product in addition to what the product is offering us. So it, it's a fully, fully in, indulging and fulfilling when you can hold something in your hand like a book, comic book or watch a movie and know that you're watching something organic made by human beings complete with its flaws as well as its perfections. But AI is doing away with all that. AI is, AI could be just, it, it could just be the only thing that, that you see on the screens, on your TV screens, on, on your laptop screens. That book, if, if we ever, if we ever have physical books 20, 30 years down the road, I, I, I still think we will. But if we ever have physical books 20, 30 years down the road, will it be drawn by human beings, written by human beings, or will it be just all AI product produced, mass produced just to give a disillusioned and disenfranchised society something to do while they kill time before they head back to their, their jobs, their 20-hour jobs? I'm being way too bleak here. Way too bleak. I know this, this was supposed to be a positive video, but so much is going on. And if we want to just limit it to comics, both in the mainstream comics and the indie comic sphere, it's all shit right now. And me as a creator, I tend to just detach from, I guess you want to call it a community. I'll call it a community. Detach from it and watch it all burn because we, we're, we've gone just absolutely batshit crazy. There's more creators just interested in, in, in engaging in, Constant bickering, and, and I hate to see you say the war, word warfare, but for lack of brevity, or sake of brevity, I should say, we'll call it warfare. Just engaging in back and forth, online spats, and egos are just off the charts. It's become pro wrestling. And as I do my weekly research on indie comic outliers, one thing they didn't do was bicker with each other. When they were contemporaries, they never bickered with each other. And if they did, it was out of the public sphere. I never I never heard of any reports of Chick Young or Rube Goldberg going at each other. Today, creators are given enough tools to create books at their leisure, but those same tools are also being used to snipe at each other. Did I say this was a positive video? I did say that, right? Yeah, I said this was a positive video. Okay. Um it's hard to be positive when you got the, the negative shit coming out and plaguing the arts. So who knows what will happen at the Eisner Awards? If Ed wins his award, what is that going to signal to the rest of the industry? What kind of message is it going to send? Will it be a good message or will it be a lost message? No, I don't think it'll be a bad message if he wins. I think it'll be a good message, but will it be heard by the right people? Will the industry finally take note and say, hey, you know what? We want to start making money again. <laughs> let's let's start making money again and start making books that people care about. And honestly, I think that the, the worst thing for the industry bullies, like Ramon Villalobos and Alex DeCampi and Evan Dorkin and all those people, the worst thing that can happen is not only Ed winning his award, but it being talked about in all the magazines and, well, We'll say magazines. All the websites, I, I don't think magazines are, are a thing anymore, but but all the websites will be talking about it. All the YouTube channels will be talking about it. Twitter will be talking about it. You know what they won't be talking about is his bullies. Ramon Villalobos, Alex DeCampi, and Molly Dwyer, and Molly Wright. The latter two are still in hiding. Haven't said a word. But I think the most tragic thing that could happen is Ed wins this award. His family accepts it. You know, God bless them. They'll accept the award. And then after that, it's 
swept under the rug and there's no need to talk about the story of Ed Pisker anymore and, and the lessons from it and what we've learned from it. Because I'm seeing that we really haven't learned a lot from it. The indie community, indie comic creators are still engaging in the same bullshit environment that led to, how can I say this without saying something that, that will misrepresent what I'm trying to say. I don't think as much shit as we give the comic book industry and it deserves all the shit it gets, the indie sphere, the indie comic community or communities, depending on how many are out there, but they haven't learned the lessons, the kind of environment that led to what happened on April 1st. They have not learned the lessons. I don't think that <clears throat> that the story is being told loud and clear. The message is being delivered, but it's not being delivered loud and clear. So what will happen when, if and when Ed wins this award? What's going to be the message after that? Will it be treated as, hey, you got your doggy treats now. Go away in peace. Just, just stop talking about him again. Just, just let him rest in peace. Don't let him say anything. Just, just let the memory fade. Let the story fade. And let's let the comic industry continue as is. Let us continue bullying more people. Let's continue sending more people to their graves. Will that be the story? Or will the story be there's still a love and appreciation for the beauty of comics, the beauty of the storytelling medium of comics, and, and a desire to make money off of them. Things that people want. And when, and when corporations practice real, legit capitalism, it just means that they're producing a product that they know people will want versus corporations or companies like DC and Marvel that produce things they think you want. Well, not that they think you want, that they think you should want. Going off a little tangent here, I, and I, I say to myself, it's, yeah. <laughs> well, let, let, me, let me put a pause here then. Let's just focus on this. I think uh, him winning would, would be a good thing. Am I rooting for him to win? Yeah, I, I, I am. And honestly, it probably will be one of the saddest saddest notes in comic. That this will be the last time that Ed Pisco will be nominated for anything. He won't produce anything new again. There will be nothing left for him to produce because he's not here to produce it. No more nominations, no more contributions to the comic medium and then what's left after that well we're going to see what the comic industry does we're going to see exactly what their plan is going forward not that i'm holding my breath or anything i've not heard anything or seen anything that suggests they're turning course if anything they're they are accelerating their path into the dirt and i i really don't care i'm, I'm too busy creating my thing I'm too busy creating my stuff, the things that I like, working on my book. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing those things. Provided we don't enter a, a an apocalypse of some kind, I will be uh, producing books and characters that I believe will recapture the imagination of comic fans. The same way that E.C. Seeger captured the imaginations of people in the 20s and 30s with Popeye or Chester Gould in the 30s with Dick Tracy or Ron Bodie in the, in the uh, 70s with Cheech Wizard. But we'll see. We'll see what we'll see if there's even a generation of comic book fans that still exist because as we've learned, as, as we found out, um, and articles are being written about, written about this, the younger generation, or they call them Generation Z, don't care about comics. How do we know? Because Disney Plus is gear is is targeting that crowd with stupid shows like Ms. Marvel or the upcoming Ruby Williams. The ratings are bad for those shows because they don't care, and and they're trying to gear to these people. And needless to say, it's not translating into comic sales. But the flip side, manga is thriving. My manga is is making buck. So the comic book medium itself is not going out of style. It's how the Western industry is packaging it, marketing and selling it. 
it's not reaching the same kids that the Japanese market is reaching. I mean, even the X-Men 97 cartoon, which I haven't seen, but a lot of people have said it was very good. That show failed. They did a very poor job marketing that show. Part of it is because people didn't trust that the show was going to be good. Marvel's done a lot to piss away a lot of the uh, the fans with bait and switches. You know, the, the Wanda TV series didn't hold people down. Falcon and the Winter Soldier had a decent start, but it ended with a political agenda. And now that Captain, that quote unquote Captain America movie with Falcon, oh, that's going to be a disaster for Marvel, a big time disaster. They, 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 the movies have done the same thing the comic books did. They pissed away the, the faithful target demographic and are trying to lure in a, uh, a generation of people that don't even read these things. It could also be just cape shit is out of style. They just want character-driven books, character IPs. Ultimately, I'm, I'm, keeping, this, <laughs> I'm keeping this video positive. Um, yeah, so we'll see what happens. We'll see if he wins the award. What do you guys think? What are your expectations on the Eisner Awards? What are your expectations of the legacy of where Pisker's story goes after the Eisner Awards, if he, if he wins or not? And uh, where do we go from here to either keep comic books alive or just watch his inevitable decline, at least here in the West? Manga's doing fine, but the comic industry and even indie comics here is suffering because of the stigma attached to the Western audience because of the comic book industry here. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. I look forward to reading it. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Take care.